Hi, this is Pete Lyons with Let's Play Salesforce, and today we're doing another Einstein Analytics SQL Basics video. In today's video, we're going to talk about some of the advanced filter options that are only available to you through SQL, specifically the ability to filter on nulls, post projection filters, and filter logic. So once again, I've logged into my trusty Trailhead org with my uh, standard sales analytics opportunity data set, and today I'm going to put some filters on this. Now first, I only want to see closed one opportunities. And secondly, in my mind, every agricultural opportunity is a win. So I'm also going to filter by industry equals agriculture. But I want to, to put some filter logic in this. And I want to say either stage equals closed one or industry equals agriculture. I don't want to see the intersection of both, you know, because I want to see all of my wins and all of my agriculture. Uh, so uh, I'm just going to look for the button to add filter logic. No, that says set limit. Uh, is it under the table modes or this more button or maybe this paintbrush? Where is it? Uh, it's simply not there. Well, I don't actually have a good reason for why this feature does not exist. There has been an idea exchange uh, idea for as long as I can remember. Uh, in fact, several have been merged together. Uh, the fact that it doesn't exist most likely suggests that there is some sort of technical limitation that would make this feature extremely challenging to deliver. Uh, I seriously doubt it is an oversight. The product team listens very closely to uh, the needs of the community, and the fact that we don't have it means that there is a reason that we don't have it. Um, I just don't know what that is. But the fact that we don't have a button for it doesn't mean that we can't do it. So let's hop into the SACL editor. Now, I'm going to zoom in really big because I'm bad at posting my code. So hopefully everybody can see my uh, gigantic screen here. So what I'm going to do is take a look at these filters. So first on uh, line two, I've got Q equals filter Q by stage name equals closed one. And on line three, I've got Q equals filter Q by account dot industry equals agriculture. Seems pretty straightforward. So how am I going to go about combining these? very very easily that's how so first get rid of the semicolon that's trailing at the end of line two now I'm gonna grab the end of line three my second filter I'm gonna paste it up on the top there and get rid of the rest of what's on line three and I'm just gonna put the double pipe symbol in here which means or uh, just so you know the double amper stand is going to be your and symbol uh, so pretty pretty common syntax there uh, you, it does also support just the text uh, string and or. And also we do have the ability to nest different filters together with the use of parentheses. So really, that's all there is to it. I just put them on the same line and I put an or in between it. And there we go. Now we got 383 rows. Looks like our filter works. So the next example that we're going to cover is post projection filters. A post projection filter is any time that you're going to apply a filter after your generate statement in your SQL query. And the the easiest use case that I can think of where you're going to need this to kind of go beyond what you can do with clicks alone is when we're trying to filter based on the output of a column calculated by a compare table. So let's spin up an example of that. I'm going to open up my opportunity data set. And the question that I'm trying to answer today is in what months last uh, in what months of 2017 did I not outperform uh, my sales of 2016? So I'm going to start by projecting my sum of amount. I'm going to group by close date month. I'm going to filter my com column by uh, 2016. Add that filter. Now I'm going to clone the column. And I'm going to update the filter so that my second column is going to be 2017. Hit update. And now I'm going to hit edit and the plus sign in the top right to create a calculated column. And my formula is going to do, uh, that I'm going to do is B minus A. And what this will return is the difference between our 2017 and 2016 performance. And again, the question that I'm trying to answer with this query is, in what months did uh, 2017 not outperform 2016 and by how much? So now I'm going to hit close and this is when I'm going to flip to the SQL editor and zoom in really close so everybody can see. 
And right here, after my uh, line six, this is my generate statement. And C, this is my calculated column that's going to tell me the difference between 2016 and 2017 performance. This is where I'm going to add my filter. So result equals filter result by C less than zero. And if we run the query and then zoom back out, we see that we're now only seeing November and December, the two months where 2017 column B failed to outperform 2016 column A. So now we're going to talk a little bit about null handling. Now I've got three columns in my data set, my date, my dim, and my measure. And uh, I've got three rows in each, and some of them are null and some of them aren't. And the way that we're going to handle dates, measures, and dimensions is going to be different for each. So let's start by looking at how we're going to address a date. So if I just go into my SACL editor, I'm going to advise that you always want to work with epics until you're forced to use dates. And the only reason really why is because it's a lot more typing and a lot more, you know, complicated functions, more uh, chances to have syntax errors. As long as you're working with the epics, you're just doing simple math. So I'm going to say Q equals filter Q by my date epic seconds equals zero. That's going to allow me to hone in on just my nulls. Now if we go back and take a look at this visualized as a bar chart, right now we have three rows. But if we're to group by my dimension, we've only got one row and it's got a value of north. So how do we get those nulls to show up? What we're going to do is copy our generate statement from line three and duplicate it above the grouping. Now using the coalesce function, we're able to output an alternate value for nulls. Now these rows are showing up because of coalesce. And if we wanted to isolate them by themselves, we could use the post projection filter that we just learned about. And that's how many rows we have that are null in my dim. So for the last part, uh, we're going to need to understand uh, about null measures. Now these are coming through as zeros. The reason why is because a feature was released in spring 17 that added better handling for nulls. Up until then, it always just comes through as a zero. Now you do need to enable this in your org, and this is a change that can never be rolled back. So I chose not to do it for this video. Uh, so in the meantime, the only way that you're really going to be able to filter uh, by null measures is really just going to be the same way that you would filter on a zero. And if you need to distinguish that, uh, you can always add like a checkbox in uh, Salesforce to say like, oh, this is null. Uh, there's a few other things you can do. You can still get nulls uh, based on projected outcomes from compare tables uh, and you know different groupings and stuff like that, but you're not going to get them from uh, hard field values. There's a lot more information about uh, how you can and can't interact with nulls uh, in the documentation and also uh, information on how to override those values in the data flow. So that concludes this chapter of SACWL Basics on advanced filter functions within SACWL. Make sure to check out the Anatomy of a SACWL Query and the video on Colesk for additional information about how to filter and control the returns of your data. If you enjoyed this video, uh, please like, subscribe, tell a friend, and as always, thanks for watching.